Since 1999, IBM has been a leader in the area of access management, which allows anybody from a browser to be authenticated once going through the demilitarized zone. You present your credentials, and then you are allowed to go to different sites without being out required to re-authenticate yourself and if the policy allows you to visit different sites. Uh, so we, we've been doing that for years, but what is it that we have uh, significantly done very recently? Well, what we did is the following. We took that access management technology component called WebSeal. That, that's, that's the name we gave to the piece uh, that goes on the demilitarized zone, this component over here. And we ported that into our latest IPS hardware chassis, which has the very famous PAM module, the protocol uh, analyzed module to detect uh, any kind of uh, uh, cross-site scripting, SQL injections, and th that's what we do with our IPSs today. So we put the same module in combination with the web seal, and we also added a low balancer from uh, data power. So is this, is, these are all three very tested technology and the low, low balancer allows us to put multiple of these uh, devices on the DMC for high availability and added uh, performance. So what we did then is that we took all these three technologies and we add them and put it to run in this uh, hardware chassis. So what are the what is that so significant? Well, besides doing web single sign-on, which we have done for years, as I said before, we do that with URL rewriting, which is what all the people that had uh, copy our reverse proxy, this is, this is called a reverse proxy mode of operation, has actually done. But we have added, over the years, sophisticated technologies like virtual uh, and transparent junctions to allow people to preserve the very same URLs they have on their browser when you implement this uh, technology and have a single sign-on without having to do uh, URL rewriting, which, uh, if not done properly, uh, can uh, break uh, a few things out. But significantly enough, we added on this remarkable box SSL termination. And by doing so, all the sessions that come from any browser into a particular uh, website, they first get intercepted in here, and the SSL session ends right there, which means that we can inspect all the traffic that comes in there. So we can detect SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and all those uh, malware technologies that we uh, normally detects on the IPS, but if you have an IPS uh, today, uh, most likely when you when you do an SSL session from, let's say, this particular browser all the way to this particular application, well, nobody, not even the, the, the IPS itself, can actually inspect the traffic there because that's an SSL connection. Every, everything is encrypted. So by doing the approach in the way that we have... Uh, uh, just described where the SSL ter session terminates right here, we can now use the PAM module that we added in here and detect all those vulnerabilities. Very, very important uh, feature. We also added risk-based authentication. And by doing that, well, we actually, we, we add a component to the solution, which is a component that we have had for years, the FIMBG, which is our federation component, and those are many more things. So, so with that uh, added module, we now have the capability of inspecting uh, or doing a risk-based authentication, which means that we do device profiling. So we look for things like IP address, MAC address, uh, geolocation, we look for screen resolution. We look for patch levels of different components on the machine. We look for browsers installed. 
and of course the patch levels, etc. Many other characteristics. So we know we can identify which device is which. And if let's say that you have come from a device that you have done business with us before, so we trust you. Uh, so maybe a user ID and password is fine. But if you are coming from let's say a new Android or, or iPad or whatever device that it is. Uh, we may bother you by asking to provide some challenge response questions. We support that out of the box or uh, any other uh, second factor authentication uh, to step up the, uh, the authentication. And we support out of, uh, out of the box uh, one-time passwords now. Completely out of the box. So there's nothing you need to do for that. Uh, you can have uh, one-time password being sent via SMS or via email that you need to provide that in order to complete your second authentication. And as we have done for years now, we via the EAI, you can support any other second factor authentication like Secure ID tokens, uh, Vasco tokens, and any other kind of devices. Or so you may have your own authentication engine within your enterprise. It's very easy to write an EAI, EAI uh, interface to uh, accommodate for that. And of course, with that FinBG, we provide federation. But not just federation in terms of SAML, we do, we have a complete STS module, uh, Secure Token Service Implementation, so we can do uh, credentials mapping. So let's say that if this would be an application on a mainframe, we can take a user ID and password, get a RACF pass ticket and pass it along on the credentials. So if this is a SharePoint application, we can actually get you a Kerberos ticket. Uh, you know, so we can do all sort of sophisticated uh, credential uh, transformation. Uh, we also have with that uh, component, the uh, FinBG, in the solution self-registration and password reset. So if you are planning on using access management for the masses, and more on, on that later, uh, you don't want to have to deal with having people reset their passwords. So we have out-of-the-box support to allow people to self-register. You can validate the registration. And then if they forget their password, next time they come in, they can actually reset it themselves by, uh, for example, answering some uh, challenge response questions as well. We also added out-of-the-box support for things like Salesforce.com, uh, Google Apps, uh, other things like uh, Office 365, uh, Workday, etc. Very trivial to actually set up a new federation in here. And if you want to do things like using OAuth for allowing people to log in with Yahoo, Gmail, etc., to, to track them from the marketing perspective, but when they want to do something that is meaningful, real business, you're not going to trust a Yahoo email. So you may actually ask that person to step up with uh, another second factor and, and complete a, maybe a more thorough registration process. Of course, as before, we enjoy with excellent Westphere integration. And probably the best example of that is the trusted authentication interceptor mechanism of uh, Westphere that we support completely out of the box. So the credentials do not flow, the only, only the user ID, but not the password flows when you get authenticated to a Westphere application. Remarkably enough, this solution is priced now for business to consumer. We're talking about millions of users without millions of dollars to pay for licenses. You basically pay per the capacity that you want to allocate by adding more devices uh, in here and, uh, because this component is priced per unit and the FinBG is also priced per server. So you have uh, something that is actually very, very scalable. The box has a significant performance. For example, it can handle 30,000 transactions per second. Or maybe it, it goes down to 20,000 transactions per second if you have the protocol authentication module activated for, for doing the inspection of the traffic. Very remarkable. And if you need more, you can drop more, more boxes on the load balancer. You know, it, it's right there for you to add um, additional components. It has a standalone option. So if you are beginning to consolidate all the access management into a single component, well, you might be delighted to know that you can configure the policy via a very nice GUI and you can set up who can access what and you know what are the access rights that the person have right there on the device. It also comes with an LDAP right on the same box. So you can use it in standalone mode, but there might be, if you are a traditional uh, access management customer, you may prefer to keep using the policy server 
component that we have always have, which is a separate server where you actually edit the policy and you push it uh, to the actual devices. Of course, it has integration with Curator, the best SIEM in the market. So Curator can actually detect, uh, uh, collect the, 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 the information about the events right there at the box. You also have the option to use TDI in case that you want to consolidate your uh, identities. So let's say that you want to use an LDAP, um, which you can also buy per server very inexpensively, uh, to actually have your, if you don't want to use the, the option that, that is the internal LDAP, you want to have a centralized LDAP that all the application also use, you can actually use TDI to bring all your uh, uh, credentials uh, into that uh, central LDAP. And this also has an option that is very remarkable as well, which is a virtual appliance. All the functionality that we have explained in here, perhaps with the exception of the performance, or unless you run it on a very big and powerful ESX server, uh, has the option of uh, deploying this as a virtual machine. One thing, one point I forgot to actually mention is that uh, we do the SSL termination so efficiently because we now exploit the instruction set that comes on the actual chip that comes on this box. So it performs the SSL. It has uh, eight uh, new instruction sets for AES. Uh, I believe there's six for the, the handling of the of the transformation and um, and two for uh, key expansion. So so we do all SSL right on the box. So it's actually very inexpensive. A fantastic solution, very nicely priced for access management. Uh, so th this sets us in a different space than just the traditional software install that you need to install the, uh, you know, in install the operating system, harden the operating system, install the component, all that you can do away with either the virtual appliance or the hardware appliance of our access management solution.